Alrighty, boys and girls, thank you for tuning in for another exciting flip class. In today's flip class, we're going to be uh, talking about the last little bits of the organelles, like you can see up here, that you will never get to see in class ever. Keep in mind that it is a video, so you have pausing and rewinding and stopping and rewatching and all that, oh, the kinds of powers that you do with videos. So let's get into it, maybe, kind of, if the clicker will click. I'm just hit it over here. There, next slide. So we were talking uh, about our cell being a city model. Now we've already discussed the nucleus. We've talked a little bit about the ERs. Uh, we kind of neglected smoothie over here. Sort of the idea, I've talked with some of you guys about this um, with the smooth ER, is that the ER is just this like tunnel or this conveyor belt for sending materials around the cell. And so the idea is that the smooth ER is really just rough ER that doesn't have ribosomes on it yet, or used to have ribosomes on it, and maybe they like flew off into the cytoplasm somewhere. Um, there's sort of competing ideas whether or not ribosomes have to be on the ER, whether they can go directly into the cytoplasm, but whatever. So the ER pretty much just does what the ER does, and the rough ER is all busy with the ribosomes. The smooth ER does have like detox powers, and can also make lipids, which are really important. Lipids are fats, so already like you're like, oh no, the fats are the bad! But remember, those fats, those are structural components. Your cell membrane is mostly made out of fat, so keep that in mind. We also talked about the Golgi, the UPS, we talked about ribosomes a little bit. So we're just going to do metabolism and we're going to skip right through some of these. You have the lysosome, which is crucial in digestion. Without uh, the lysosome, you know, the badness would happen. A big part of your metabolism is breaking down molecules to release their energy. The lysosome here is going to help us do a lot of that breaking down. Uh, this is the mitochondria. The mitochondria is the big money maker for the metabolism. This one is making a material called ATP which obviously stands for adenosine triphosphate, duh. Which is essentially what your cell uses for energy, just like you use cash for money, uh, the cell uses ATP for energy. There's also chloroplasts, chloroplasts with the asterisk there, it's a plant only, so a plant only has ability to make food. We do not have the ability to make food, therefore we are lacking chloroplasts and not green. Uh, many plants also tend to have a very large central vacuole. Now, animal cells can have vacuoles as well, but we usually don't get big, huge ones. The central vacuole is going to be for storing the food that's made on the chloroplasts. Uh, defense is another group of organelles. I know these are just sort of my own groups, just to sort of help you conceptualize them, so, you know, think of them in chunks. Uh, the cell membrane, huge on defense, controls what goes in and out of the cell. We'll talk more about it, but basically there's all these proteins embedded inside your lipid bilayer of your cell that helps distinguish between good cells, bad cells. This is one of the big ways that your white blood cells know who to kill and who to let live. You also have vesicles. When your cells uh, eat the baddies, they put them inside of a vesicle. So we talked earlier how the vesicle is used for moving things around. You can think of it like a briefcase or a book bag, but instead of being like that, uh, this one will be moving around the badness, so it's like a hazmat bag. And then the lysosome will come over to the vesicle, hook up to it, and destroy it with its super destroying lysosome powers. So literally you have, you know, like your cell membrane, and, you know, the badness will come inside of it. The cell membrane will change conformation, this little dot, that's the badness, will actually change and put the badness inside of a vesicle, which is actually made out of the same double membrane, so there's the badness. There's the vesicle, and it comes all in, and then here it comes. It's a lysosome. It's colored in dark because it's scary, and it's also a double membrane, by the way. And it comes over, and it fills that vesicle full of digestive enzymes, and basically turns it into a big old murder bag. So yeah, so the lysosomes play a big role, and then there's also peroxisomes. Peroxisomes are yeah, I don't know why it's doing that either. Peroxisomes are really kind of cool because they inject poison into things. They spew poison all over the place. The poison is hydrogen peroxide. It's extremely reactive. Uh, redux reactions all day. I mean, just like soul-crushing chemistry happening right there. In addition to that, you also have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum obviously being the smooth one, not covered with ribosomes. And while it's being all smooth, it has the ability to synthesize lipids, but it also plays a huge role in detox. 
It's gonna neutralize those toxins. Your liver has tons and tons of smooth ER in it because your liver, in addition to other things, is sort of the cleaning crew. So it sort of cleans up all the stuff that would be bad inside your body and protects you from the nasties and the toxins. So the question is, how can we see all of those? And you guys are in for a treat because, uh, well, unless we have these. These would be electron microscopes. Here's a little bit older one. You can see there's the screen where they would be looking at things on the electron microscope. And the one over here on the right is a little bit more modern, but you can see again, it's hooked up to a computer. What these do is you actually have to freeze specimen, you cut it into like a sliver that you couldn't even see the sliver without a regular microscope. You stick it on there, you bombard it with energy, and the computer actually renders you an image. It's really cool stuff, but uh, yeah, we don't have one because they cost tons of money. But when you get them, you can actually see pictures like this. Uh, so this big thing, this is a... Uh, well, it's saying lipid droplet. What that really is, boys and girls, that is a, uh, it's a type of vacuole that's just holding lipids. And you can see over here we've got some mitochondria. You see smooth ER. Uh, you can see some more smooth ER hanging out over here. And then over here on the side you can see uh, ER that's covered with the ribosomes, giving you the rough ER. These are what the organelles actually look like. I'm not talking about like those little diagrams that you guys look at. But these are what the organelles actually look like and what's really cool is that the mitochondria literally does look the way that the diagrams have it. You can see when you look at it, you got your my here's a couple mitochondria you can see on it. You've got your double membrane that's very important. And then on the inside you've got, got all these interfoldings and whatnot. We're going to talk about the importance of those interfoldings later when we do our metabolism unit. But again you can see hanging out over here the uh, double membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum. Notice how they're not distinguishing between rough and smooth. Again, it is all the same endoplasmic reticulum, which means there's going to be nucleus nearby here because the ER is always like right up on the nucleus. Unfortunately, we have one of these. And these don't really let us see very many of the organelles, but they will let us see some of the organelles. So here are some pictures actually taken with an actual light microscope. You guys are going to be drawing sketches. When you're drawing a sketch, it's very important that you capture the essence of the cell. There's two main things that can sort of take away from your sketches. One is sketches, just the sketches themselves. It'll be not even close to a representation of what you see. And then the other one, because I'll tell the kids, okay, you know, draw what you see. It'll be like a couple dots in a swirl line. Well, that's what I saw, because I couldn't go to a microscope, Mr. Patterson. So you have to make sure, I know you guys have been using the scopes, I know you're good at using the scopes. Now we're going to focus in our flip lab, we're going to focus on drawing technique. So here you've got a 100 times and a 400 times. You notice these cells have a pretty regular shape to them. These are plant cells. These are from cork, which is made out of bark. So we have these cells here. And, and you notice you don't see a whole lot on the inside. The cork comes from the bark, which is basically like your outer layer of skin for the tree too. There's no other organelles really in there. Now here is a sketch. This is actually made by the person who discovered the cell. This is his sketch from his scientific notebook. This is the level of detail that you need to have in your sketches. You'll notice, definitely not an artist's rendition, all right? Mr. Hook here, Mr. Robert Hook, he was not an artist. So yeah, they discovered the cells and stuff, by the way. But you can see it's a good level of detail. When you look in here, you can really see the essence of what he was looking at. You can see the individual cells, like little boxes, like prison cells. Here is some potato cells. When you look at potato, we're going to stain them with iodine. A lot of the organelles, you can't see them until you stain them. They're so thin, it's transparent, it's translucent. So we use stain so the organelles really show up. Here are potato cells. You'll notice you can't find a nucleus in there, but it looks like there's like crap tons of nuclei in there. You can see them over here too. Now you see the cell wall going around the outside. Again, it's got that sort of uniform shape that you need to have. But all these organelles over here, these are weird organelles that are holding starch. So these are weird organelles that they use to contain uh, their food source because remember, potato is an underground storage structure. Here's a 400 times zoom in of an Elodia leaf, or Elodia if you're feeling Burdungeous. But you can see all these, uh, well again, the nice cell wall. What's really great, oh, green on green, that's good. What's really great about these cells is if you look really, really close up in there, you can actually see the cell membrane 
right up against the cell wall. It's great. But you see all these greenies in here? I bet you can guess what those are. If you're saying chloroplast, duh, then you're right. Those are the chloroplasts that make the food. They're green. Remember, chloro means green. And again, when you draw your sketches, I mean, you're going to feel, when you're drawing this one, you're going to feel like you're drawing, like, bricks. And that's good. That means you're doing it right. I want a high level of detail. Your sketches should represent what's shown here. Here's 100 times and 400 times of the onion cell. Again, notice that routine structure. It's almost got like a subway pattern. If this was tiling, it'd be like a subway pattern. Here we are zoomed in on 400 times. This is stained. We're going to stain it with iodine, which really lets you see the nucleus. This is stained with some other like bluish green stain that we're not going to use. We're going to use iodine. But yeah, they, they're using obviously something else. And again, you need that very nice detail here. You need to show me the nuclei in your drawings. Very important. For some animal cells, you'll notice they don't have a regular shape. You'll see that each cell looks really different from all the other cells, and that's because they're lacking the cell wall, but you can still see good cell membrane. We can't even see that it's double layered because we can't zoom in far enough, but again, you can see the excitement and majesty of the nucleus. For these, when you get up on high power, you can really see, you can see the nucleus, and you can see, oh, well, if I can get it, you can see the dark spot, that's the nucleolus, that non-membranous region where all the DNA is really clumping up where the ribosomes get made. So there's our animal cell. You see it looks a lot different. They tend to be a lot more spread out and they don't have a nice regular shape. Those came from your cheek. We're going to collect some from your cheeks. Here are bacteria and you'll notice the bacteria we're zooming on a thousand times just to be able to see this. So again, just this slide is mostly just to show you how much smaller they are. These are uh, bacilli bacteria. These are uh, cocci bacteria. Like, you know, ooh, cocci, cocci bacteria. And again, it's on a thousand times. That's the oil immersion lens. When you're making your sketches, it's very important that you put down the magnification that you were on. So if you're making a sketch on a thousand times, it needs to say a thousand times. If you're making a sketch on high power, it needs to say 400 times. I want the number of people. Now you guys know how much a microscope magnifies. If you can't remember, 10 in the ocular times whatever it says on the objective lens. And again, I can't stress enough, your sketches, they will either be acceptable or they will be unacceptable. On Monday, you we're going to just practice making sketches. If they're acceptable, you get points. If they're unacceptable, you'll be doing them again. So make sure you take your time. Commit to the detail. I understand that not everyone is artists. I am no artist, but I can still produce sketches of decent quality that represent those pictures. So make sure that you are doing that. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great weekend.